Hey, Sakita, I think we should break up. What? This person who is breaking up with me out of nowhere was my first girlfriend since graduating college and becoming a working adult. My girlfriend was beautiful, and I was just a normal, nerdy gamer boy. I always knew that my girlfriend was out of my league, but I really liked her. More than anything, I was happy that we shared the same hobbies. Or at least, that's how I felt. But it turns out I was the only one that felt that way. Why? You really have to ask that? But I mean, what? Did I do something wrong? That's exactly it. Look, do you remember what I asked for for our anniversary? Of course! You wanted to stay at the Hotel Reflect Tokyo for a night. That's why I even asked for a half day off from work, just to make the reservation. It was almost impossible to reserve there, and I had to fight tooth and nail! Yeah, I'm sure. And yes, you did manage to reserve the Hotel Reflect Tokyo for us. And what was the room you reserved? What do you mean, what room? I got the special collaboration room, the one that was the start of our relationship. The online game Black Black Dystopia. Who would have thought that they'd announce a collaboration at this timing? It feels like fate. There couldn't be a room more perfect for our anniversary, don't you think? See, this is exactly it. On our anniversary, a game collaboration room? Why? That's not what we're going there for. Everything is always games, games, games. Even when we go out somewhere, it's a game collaboration cafe or a game collaboration shop. I'm sorry, but honestly, I can't keep up. Reyna! So please, I'm done. We're breaking up. Reyna was glaring at me through her tears, and there was nothing I could say in response. She was absolutely right that I was in the wrong. Reyna spent three years by my side like this, and yet, I was never able to see how she was really feeling. This made me feel so pathetic. Reyna turned around and walked out the door, and I would never see her again. So that's what happened, and my girlfriend, Yoshi, broke up with me. I see, I see. So that's why Yashi left the Monochrome family without saying anything. This is the world of the online game, Black Black Dystopia, my favorite game that I was obsessed with. Here, I wasn't the normal working guy, Sakuta Shirosaki, but instead, I was a beautiful white mage, Shiro Usagi. The person that I'm speaking to right now is my closest friend in our guild, the Monochrome family, the mighty Black Knight Kuro Ageha. They're the mainstay of the guild, and a reliable attacker with the greatest offensive power. When well, you're telling me, it sounds like you were in the wrong, Shiro Usagi. I know, I know. Oh, I'm sorry, would you mind reviving me? It looks like I collected too much hate, so I can't attack right now. Noted. Thanks. Now, back to the story. Do you really understand where you messed up the most, Shiro Yusagi? What do you mean? Is it that I chose the wrong room at the hotel? <laughs> nope. Wrong. That was just the trigger. My guess is that when Yashi left, she wanted you to chase after her. What I'm trying to say is, she was testing the balance between games and her. What's more important, me or your gaming? That's what she wanted to know, and yet, this was the result. Instead of going after her, you're here trying to complete the daily mission with me. That's why it's over. Wait, whoa, I got the golden fangs. Nice. Now I can make my new equipment with this. Really? Nice. That's exactly the point I'm trying to make. You know, Yoshi actually said that to me too. Twice even. I don't blame her. I would be pissed off too if I was a girlfriend and my partner chose games over me. That sucks. This might sound like an excuse, but it's not that games were more important to me than Yoshi. It's just that I thought Yoshi loved Black, Black Dystopia as much as I did. Well, there are enough women out there as there are stars in the galaxy. I'm sure you'll find someone. Ah, Kuro Ageha. Thank you for letting me talk to you about this. I needed to get it off my chest. No worries. Anytime. But not using the hotel reservation seems like a waste. Isn't that the collaboration that was trending on social media lately? I heard that it was a crazy fierce battlefield for the reservations and that they sold out within one minute of being released. Ugh, I would have loved to go too. Oh, then do you want to go in my place? 
as a thanks for listening to my rant? What? Oh, no, 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 I can't do that. That's too much. Please, don't hesitate. I'm always causing you inconvenience in the game anyway. Plus, at this point, I don't think I would be able to enjoy it even if I went. I could auction the reservation to some reseller who's trying to benefit off of this. But I would much rather give it to someone who loves this game from the bottom of their heart as much as I do. But, but, to be honest, I don't have the money for it. Oh, don't worry about that, please. The reservation's been paid for already. Uh, but still, no, I'd feel too bad. Hmm. Okay, then why don't we do this? You can stay in the hotel, and you can get the limited edition goods that only people staying at the hotel can purchase, as a souvenir for me. How does that sound? Are you sure? Of course. I'd be happy if you can enjoy it for me. Well then, I'm going to gladly accept your offer. Thank you so much. I should be the one thanking you. This back and forth happened about a week ago. I got a message from Kuro Ageha that they had the best time in the collaboration room and that they wanted to meet up to give me the souvenirs. Kuro Ageha invited me to an offline meeting and that following weekend, we made plans to meet. When I thought about it, it's been almost two years since I teamed up with Kuro Ageha but it'll be the first time we were going to meet in person. Time flew by, and before I knew it, a week had already passed, and the day of our plans arrived. Over the last few days, I'd been thinking about what Kuro Ageha might look like, or what kind of person they might be. They're always calm and logical, and their advice is precise, and they really understand girls, but they're also really kind, even to nerds like me. There's also a good chance that Kuro Ageha lives in a completely different world from a shadow character like me. They might be the type of person to never speak to someone like me in this world. But one thing's for sure, our friendship that was born out of black, black dystopia was real. That was when... Um, excuse me? Hmm? How can I help you? Mister, are you by any chance Shiro Yusagi? I turned around, and the voice belonged to a little girl who looked like she was about 10 years old. Behind her was a woman more beautiful than anyone I had ever seen before. The two of them had very similar faces. Um, why yes, I am. But what does that mean? Apologies for the delayed introduction. Allow me to introduce myself. In this world, nice to meet you. My name is Asano Kurosawa, AKA Kuro Aga. I'll be in the fifth grade this year. And this is... This is my older sister, Yumi Kurosawa. I'm sorry, she insisted that she wanted to come with me, so she forcibly tagged along with me today. Well, duh, if I knew that it was going to be such a fancy room, we wouldn't have expected such a generous offer. I'm Asano's sister, Yumi. Nice to meet you. Uh, um, I wanted to come thank you, too. I don't even know how to properly express our gratitude. Wait, 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 what? Kuro Ageha? You're in elementary school? Wait, and you're a girl? Yeah, didn't I mention it before? Or eh, maybe I hadn't, I don't know. Because your avatar is such a manly character. But I could say the same for you. Shiro Yusagi is a female character. Well, I guess that's true, but... Anyway, who cares? None of that is important now. Oh, here, your souvenirs. I wanted to talk about the souvenirs and stuff with you, so if you have time, would you be down to get tea or something? I couldn't even wrap my head around the situation, but this was how our first offline meeting started. At first, I didn't know what to say or how to act, because the person who showed up was so far off from what I had imagined. But as we got to talking, it was the same crew Ageha that I was always talking to, and our conversation took off. Yeah, so the collaboration room was so amazing! It was literally exactly like the guild's resting area! Oh, how was the beef jerky? Oh man, it was so frickin' good! I'm glad. And did your sister have a good time too? No matter how hard I tried to invite my sister to play the game with me, she never will, but even she was really excited about the hotel room! Wait, whoa, sorry! I spilled the juice! Come on, what are you doing? Would you mind putting your hands up so you don't get wet? I'll wipe it with the napkin. Ugh. 
What? Oh, did my hand hit yours? Sorry about that. No, no, that was my fault. I I'm sorry. Ugh, I'm sorry, Mr. Shirasaki. My sister has a weird complex about her hands. Sometimes people misunderstand, but you didn't do anything wrong. It's not like she doesn't like you. Asano! You see, my family, we're a single-parent household, so my sister has done almost everything around the house her whole life. And because of that, her hands are a little rough. She says she's embarrassed about it. I don't get it. She's so talented and has so much to offer, and yet she's never had a boyfriend. Asano, that's enough. Please don't embarrass me anymore in front of somebody we barely know. It's not embarrassing, and Mr. Shiosaki isn't someone I barely know. He's my best friend. Plus, Mr. Shiosaki might be oblivious to the subtleties of a girl's heart, but he's a genuinely good person, so if you just explain it to him, he'll understand. Right, Mr. Shiosaki? I guess that's true. She's right. I don't know anything about what a girl wants, but Miss Kurosawa, uh, I mean, the older sister, I think your hands are very beautiful. Please don't say something you don't mean. I'm not lying. Because those hands are the hands that you've used to work hard and support your family. I don't think there's anything embarrassing about that. If anything, it's something you should be proud of. I'm sure you feel the same way, Miss Kurosawa. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're talking about me at the end, right? It's confusing, so you can just call me Asano. But still, I can't help but be embarrassed by them. And I hate them, these ragged hands. After that conversation, the sister retreated and stayed silent. That continued the rest of the time until we left the cafe. Thank you so much for today! I had so much fun! Oh, before we part ways, can I have a little bit more of your time? Um, sure, but... Thanks. I'll be right back. I'm pretty sure that department store should have a good shop somewhere. Huh? Department store? I ran as fast as I could. Even then, I think I made the both of them wait around 10 minutes or so. I finally got back to the two girls, and I was both surprised and relieved that neither of them were in a bad mood. I'm pretty sure Reyna would get mad whenever I made her wait even just a little bit. Ah, oh, welcome back. Thanks for waiting, Asano. Anyway, I got this for your sister. If you'd like, I hope you'll use it. Is this... What I was saying before really wasn't a lie. I'll say it again, but I sincerely think that your hands are really beautiful. So for the hard-working older sister, this is a present from me. The hand cream from this place has really good reviews. Wow, well done, Mr. Shiosaki! Maybe you can give it a try. And I hope someday you'll be proud of those hands of yours. It's Yumi. What? I'm not just the older sister, you can call me Yumi. Can I call you Miss Yumi then? Sure, Mr. Shiosaki, is that right? I, um, I think I just fell for you, Mr. Shiosaki. What? Wait, seriously? If you'd like, will you please go out with me? Miss Kurosawa, I mean, Yugi, her radiant skin was burning redder than the sun at dawn. And then, Shiro Yusagi, you rejected my sister and ran off just like that. I'm so sorry. Well, she's not wrong. Just as Kuro Ageha said, even though I was able to get asked out by her beautiful sister, I rejected her. And not only that, but I ran away as fast as I could. So, yeah, did she do something wrong? Is someone like my sister not your type? No, no, that's not it at all. To be honest, she's very much my type. Actually, so much so that I got too nervous and I ran away. Oh, oh I see. That was a quick answer. That's why I was so happy when she asked me out. The rejection was entirely my own problem. I panicked. Reyna, who I had dated for three years, had been by my side all that time, and yet I didn't understand anything about her. And then in the end, I hurt her and let her go. That's why I'm scared. I didn't want to repeat the same thing. As a guy, I feel so helpless and useless when I make a girl cry. It sucks! 
Well then, why don't you try to get to know my sister properly this time? Shiro Yusagi, you're the type of person who can genuinely apologize and make a change at the next opportunity, so I'm sure you'll be fine. Wait, Kuro Ageha, would you be okay with your sister dating somebody like me? If anything, I would feel a lot better if it was you, I think. Because I like people like you too. Oh, if you're into younger girls, would you just want to date me then? That is not a nice joke! Hey, I was half serious. But would you please tell your sister this for me? That I'm sorry I wasn't able to give her an answer, but I was really happy that she felt that way? Alright, anyway, let's stop talking about this. Should we go to capture the limited edition boss now? Okay, but I saw on the bulletin board that this boss is... Yep, they're saying that the operations team messed up the difficulty settings, and that it's almost impossible to win against him. Because you'll get hit by a debuff that reaches your limit, your playing skills have to be top-notch, of course. But I read that the key to winning is teamwork. I see. Well, when you put it like that... Yeah, I can barely contain my excitement. We innocently went towards the boss, and we lost. Over and over and over again. Mr. Shirosaki seems pretty down again. I wonder if he's okay. Wasn't he like this recently too? I heard that he was dumped by his girlfriend that time. Then maybe this time it's the same thing. If that's the case, even though he looks like he's going to sink into his seat, he still gets his work done. It's impressive. Hey Kishibe. You do know that I can hear everything that you guys are saying behind me, right? We're letting you hear it. And why is that? Obviously because we want to make it easier for you to talk to us if there's something bothering you. Why, thank you. But please, it's none of your business. That's right. It's none of their business. And there's no way that I could tell them either. How could I tell them that I rejected someone like Miss Yumi and that I regret it a little bit? But still... I'm too scared that I'm going to hurt Miss Yumi if I were to date her. And plus, I still think about Reina and... I know that face. You're thinking about your ex-girlfriend, aren't you? How do you know that? What are you, psychic? <laughs> you may not realize it, but you're so easy to read, Sakata. Well, I hope you can sort out those feelings inside of you soon. Otherwise, you can't move on to the next one, right? Kishibe, thanks. Sure thing. So I couldn't bring myself to tell Kishibe all of this, but there were three things clouding my mind right now. One, that I rejected Miss Yumi's feelings towards me. Two, that I still liked Reina and I couldn't forget her. But there was nothing I could do about those two. No matter how much I thought about it, they were all in the past anyway. However, just the third thing was different. Later, Kuro Ageha was losing to our enemies a lot. Their fighting stance sucked, and all of the movements were messy and the attacks disorganized. This was my third concern. Um, Kuro Ageha, are you okay? I'm fine. Did something happen? What do you mean something? Well, is there something on your mind? Lately you get defeated pretty easily, and your response time is slow too. And you're making simple mistakes with your motions too. If there's anything you want to talk about, you know? I'm always here. From there, it was silent for about five minutes, and Kuro Ageha had frozen. Actually... You hurt your hand? Yes, that's right. That's why I can't move it like I usually do. Then you should probably take a rest and not play the game for a while. But if I don't defeat the limited edition area boss with you, Mr. Shirasaki, then I'm definitely going to regret it. Plus, we need to collect new weapons, right? Hmm, true. We didn't know when they might bring back this boss character again. So as a gamer, I couldn't deny that I really wanted to defeat him now. That being said, Reina dumped me because of this. Because this was my way of thinking. I wasn't going to make the same mistake. The game is really important to me, but there are things more important than this. Well then, that's all the more reason to rest it sooner, so that you can get back into the game sooner in your best shape. If there's anything I can do to help, I will. So for now, let's be patient and take a break. Are you sure? Of course. Um, then 
There is a favor I want to ask of you. Will you come grocery shopping with me? I wanted to ask if you could help me carry the bags. What? Uh, I see. Of course. Thank you so much. It'll be a huge help. I mean, I can help with anything, like gathering materials, within the game. Oh well. It'll be nice to get my mind off of all of this anyway. And so, I went to the supermarket where Kuro Ageha, rather, Asano, had told me to meet her. However, for some reason, it was Miss Yumi who showed up instead. Wait, Miss Yumi? Why are you here? What do you mean, why? We promised to meet here, didn't we? And then I realized, I see, that favor to go grocery shopping wasn't to go with Asano, but to go in her place to help her sister with the bags. Oh, nothing. It was my misunderstanding. Sorry about that. Shall we? You're really saving me. I couldn't let the sale today go to waste. Is... is that so? I'm glad I could be of some help. Mr. Shiyosaki, what's your favorite meal to have? Huh? Hmm, let's see, that's hard. But maybe it's a hamburger. <laughs> what is it? Oh, nothing, I just thought that was so cute. I see. Hamburger, is it? If I were to make it for you, would you eat it for me? Uh, uh, well... Would that be an inconvenience? No way! Well then, please let me make it for you sometime. Miss Yumi, your hands. Uh, you finally noticed. That's right. I've been using the hand cream that you gave me, Mr. Sakuta, and my hands have become so much better. Thank you. I see. That makes me happy to hear. I told you that you have beautiful hands. Thanks to you, I finally feel like I can use my own hands a little bit. When Miss Yumi said that and smiled, she was even more beautiful than what I remembered. And I was sure that there must be hundreds of other guys out there who felt this way about her. It made me realize that I'm not a man worthy of standing next to her. On one hand, I was relieved, but on the other, I had to admit that I was selfishly a little sad about it too. Is this everything? Uh, let me hold something. Don't worry about it. I may be a nerd, but I'm still a guy. If anything, I can easily hold another bag. What? How? Your hands are full. With my mouth. Ah! Uh... <laughs> You're always joking. I wasn't even trying to make a joke. Well, let's go halvesies on this one at least. Halfsies? Um, Miss Yumi? Yes, what is it? Isn't this a little embarrassing? What is it? I'm just happy to be able to walk side by side like this with you. And I'm having fun. Oh, look, they're doing the lottery over there. Oh, they are. Wait, what? Standing right in front of me was none other than Reyna. She looked like she was having so much fun. Way more fun than I ever saw her have with me. And she was latched onto the arm of a man far more handsome than me. It looked like they had one pack of pocket tissues, but even then they looked like they were having the time of their lives. It didn't seem like she noticed me there as they walked off. I felt a brief pain in my heart, but at the same time, I was genuinely happy to see Reyna smiling like that. Reyna had moved on, clear as day, and in that moment, I finally realized that it was over with her, that I was the one left with a broken heart. Is something the matter? Huh? No, it's nothing. But you kind of look like you're about to cry. No, no, not at all. Mr. Shiyosaki, let's stop by the convenience store. Did you forget to buy something? Yes, we're going to buy happiness. Do they even sell that at the convenience store? Miss Yumi completely ignored my question, and she stormed off towards the convenience store. Oh, by happiness? You mean convenience store ice cream? Are you making fun of me right now? I don't mean to. Usually, we only buy ice cream at the supermarket when it's on sale. So convenience store ice cream is a super treat for the Kurosaka family, you know. We're only allowed to eat it for celebrations or when we're feeling really down. The vanilla flavor of convenience store ice cream is the flavor of happiness. 
Mm, it's so good. I don't mean to be. Won't Asano be mad at you if she finds out? Exactly. So, will you keep this little secret between the two of us? A secret between the two of us, huh? That makes me blush. <laughs> Come on. Don't you feel a bit better after that? <laughs> you might be right. Hey, Miss Yumi? What is it? Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm really happy that you're next to me right now, Miss Yumi. I felt that from the bottom of my heart. If I was by myself right now, I would probably shamelessly be crying on this bench right now. The ice cream that I had that day tasted like the sweetest ice cream I had ever had in my life. And just like she said, I guess this is exactly what people call happiness. It was the last day that we could challenge the boss back in Black, Black Dystopia. Asano's hand seemed like it was much better. And if anything, after her recovery, she was even better than she was before. We used the various materials that the two of us had collected to create a new large sword. And we waved it around with our spirits high. I stood next to her, ready for battle. In front of us stood the largest enemy we had ever faced before. But with Kuro Ageha at my side, I wasn't scared. We are going to win this. We have to! Yes, we have to. Um, Mr. Shiyosaki. What is it? If we win this battle, there's something I want to tell you. Hey, that's a death flag, you know. What? Is it? I didn't think about that, I'm sorry. But it's okay. I'm not worried. I know that we'll be able to get through this together. Yes, that's right. Well then, let's do this! Uh... Kuro Ageha, hold back so that you can recover. I can try to distract him and gain us some time. Thank you very much. Just as I thought, the white mage's attacking magic still isn't enough to damage him at all. I'm sorry, I'll come back to the front lines. My buff is about to run out, so I'm going to cast the spell. Ah! Kuro Ageha, incoming counterattack. Stand back. Yes. We're almost there. We can do this. All right, just one more attack. But I can't get near him. If that's the case, then I have to go first. But then, Mr. Shirosaki, you... I'm going to use all of my remaining MP to defend. But even then, I think I can only get us about 10 seconds max. So Kuro Ageha... I got this. Before that, I'm going to take him down. The flames were closing in on us. Even if it's a game, I could feel the heat as I was drenching in sweat. In the real world, I would never stand a chance. But strangely... Knowing that Kuro Ageha was behind me gave me all the confidence to stand my ground. I think that this is what they call courage. Now! This is the end. Cleared. Cleared? Kuro Ageha's one last strike blew the boss into two pieces. And we finally heard the winning fanfare echo around us. The words stage cleared sparkled above our heads like it was our crown. We did it, Kuro Ageha! Yes, we did it! Oh, the drop item is the event special item, the Ring of Happiness. Ah, oh, I'm so happy! I've been wanting this for so long! Congratulations! For me, it was the armband of good luck. I... I see. Mr. Shiozaki, please let me say this one more time. I like you. Please go out with me, I swear on this ring to make you happy. Asano? No, it's me, Yumi. In the end, it turns out that this was what was going on. Over the last few days, the person controlling Kuro Ageha wasn't Asano, it was Miss Yumi. The reason I rejected Miss Yumi in the first place was because I didn't know her well enough. So Asano thought of this plan to make me get to know her sister faster by having her sister play this game with me. Obviously, that meant the hand injury was also a lie, and the reason why her playing was shaky was because the controller was genuinely a beginner. The more I thought about it, the more it all started to make sense. I thought it was weird that you started calling me by my real name in the game, and now it all makes sense. I'm sorry for lying to you, but I wanted Shiro Yusagi to understand my sister's feelings and get to know her more too. And then, my sister fell for you even more too. She really likes you, so that's why. Don't worry. I felt it all. Just a short while ago, she could only do beginner movements, but now she already has the skills where she can take down an area boss. Even if she was naturally good at games, 
She would never have been able to get to this level without a lot of hard work and passion. I thought about Miss Yumi, and how she was feeling, and I wanted to repay her kindness towards me. I think this is what they call love. That's why I... Will you have some convenience store ice cream with me again? Does that mean... You said that the Kurosawa family has convenience store ice cream when you celebrate, right? Yes, I can't wait. Me neither. Oh, by the way, there's something I forgot to say, Miss Yumi. I like you too. This time, I won't mess it up. In the end, I heard Kuro Ageha say, Ice cream? What's he talking about? I need to hear more about this. And that was undoubtedly Asano speaking. That's why I said, Next time, Asano, you can come, and the three of us can have it. Caring for someone means also caring for the things that they care about the most. I think that's what it means to truly care about someone. And I want to care for everything about this girl that I like. So sleepy. My name is Yoshito Harimura. I'm just your average student. Now that I'm a senior in high school, I was striving for a fresh start, but... I like to go on a trip on a nice day like this. No, I'm done living like that. I should attend high school properly for at least one year. I heard that guy hardly ever came to school until last year. Uh, he's a truant. His eyes are kind of dead. Am I being talked about again? My class is lively, so a guy like me ends up standing out from the crowd. What's wrong, Harimura-kun? You look sleepy today, too. You stayed up late again, didn't you? Kushiro-san. Karen Kushiro is the president of our class. Kushiro-san is extraordinary. She ran for class president despite the fact that no one else wanted to. She's also cute and popular both inside and outside of class. She's not someone that I, a shy guy, could be associated with. Harimura-kun, you live alone in the apartment, right? Yeah, because of my parents' work. That's why I think the freedom has weakened your spirit. So, starting today, I'm gonna structure you. Eh? So, your training will begin tomorrow. Y you can't be serious. Of course I am. After all, I am the class president. I see. I guess she wants to do something about me, the class inconvenience, as part of her duties as president. There didn't appear to be any sweet or bitter reason for it. Yes, yes. Who would be here so early in the morning? Uh, Kushiro-san? Good morning, Harimura-kun. I'm here, as promised. I didn't expect you to show up at my house so early in the morning. I bet you didn't even have breakfast yet. Well, you guessed right. All right, go wash your face first. You act like you own the place, even though you've never been here before. But strangely enough, I don't feel bad about it. How is it? Is it good? Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> you should show it more on your face. I'm not good at that kind of thing, but thank you. I feel like it's been a while since I had a decent breakfast. Are you the type to skip breakfast? My body's gotten used to jello drinks and block nutrition. Oh my god. What on earth are you so busy doing that you can't even make yourself something? I guess I'll have to keep coming over to make you breakfast. This one incident led to more opportunities to get involved with Kushiro-san. You probably don't have a proper lunch prepared, right? Here. You made it for me? It's just for today. I can't just leave you be. Since then, Kushiro-san has made lunch for me every day. Hi, Murakun. You talk to me more properly than I expected. I mean, I would never be mean to someone who's been kind to me. Hmm? You don't think of me as nosy. I'd rather take my actions as kindness, huh? Thanks to you, I'm doing well in school, too. She began to visit my home more frequently. Why did you pick a horror movie? I was just startled by the sudden loud noises all. I wanted to scare you and laugh at you, but you don't get scared at all. I'm used to scary movies, so this is nothing. I should head back. Kushiro-san always left around evening. Since this is a boy's room, perhaps she's being cautious. Speaking of which, what is this room? Oh, that's... I guess you could call it a souvenir space. Wow, lots of strange stuff. Every time my father travels abroad, 
he buys something and sends it to me. Oh, your dad travels for work? But I'm not going to add any more. You say that, but won't your dad just keep sending more? Maybe so. I'll just tell him I don't have room to display them. Plus, it's not the stuff that's really important. One holiday. <laughs> hey there, cutie! Come hang out with us for a bit. Get off me! I'm not interested in going out with you. I have someone I like. Hey, guys. Knock it off. Can't you see she's not interested? Ow! My arm! I'm sorry. We won't do it again. Take this as a lesson and don't ever come near her again. Hari Murakun, why are you here? I was walking around and happened to see you. Are you all right? Thanks to you. Hari Murakun, you always seem so unmotivated. But you're actually strong. No, I was merely bluffing. I'm glad those guys left. You're being modest. Oh, right. Please stop by my house so I can thank you. It's close by. Okay, then. I'm home. Welcome, Welcome back. back. Kushiro-san? You have three daughters? Of course not. They're my siblings. Play with my sisters while I go change. Oh, no. I'm a single child, so I don't know how to deal with them. I've never seen Big Brother before. Are you and Sister close? No, I'm... Oh dear. You guys are such kids. Of course he's her boyfriend. No, he's not. He's just a classmate. I brought him here because we ran into each other. You brought him here just because you ran into him? Ah, uh, Sis is definitely dating him. Hey, Big Brother. Yesterday in my school. Ugh! Harimura-kun rescued me! That's why I brought him here to thank him! Huh? Huh. Doesn't look that strong to me. So if it's okay with you, would you like to have dinner with us? You sure? You haven't decided what you're going to have for dinner anyway, right? No, but... I shouldn't intrude on a family gathering. It's fine. Let's eat, yo. Let's eat, yo! It's not like the whole family ever gets together anyway. My parents have a small business, and they always come home late. In the end, I took her up on her kind offer. Even I, who'd never eaten with family before, found it to be a heartwarming experience. It must be thanks to Kushiro-san there's such a cheerful atmosphere, even when their parents are away. Thanks for today. It was fun. Even you, who are always so unmotivated, thought it was fun, huh? How cruel. I'm just kidding. I had a lot of fun, too. But I guess I was a little jealous. I don't have any siblings. I only have memories of eating alone. Honey Murakun, then you can stop by any time. <gasps> hey! Are you guys spying on us? No. Just curious if you guys are gonna kiss. Kiss! Kiss! You cowards! <laughs> Following that... I enjoyed several visits with the Kushiro family. I wish that this kind of time could last forever. Then one day... Harimura-kun... Kushiro-san? What's wrong? I came here today to say goodbye. What do you mean? My parents' company was duped by a business associate they trusted. And they are now deeply in debt. The sum was not something you could pay back quickly unless you were a millionaire. Dad said he didn't want to trouble us with debt. That's why he plans to live on his own and pay back the debt. And because Mom can't care for the three of us, we'll be sent to live with relatives separately. But they're so close! I'll be relocating to Hokkaido to live with my relatives. It's not until next month, but I wanted to let you know as soon as possible. I know it's only been a short time, but... I've had a lot of fun with you, Harimura-kun. I want to make more memories with you while I still can. So, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Kushiro-san, are you okay with that? Of course not! But, as a child, there's nothing I could do about it. All I could do is smile in front of my sisters. I'm sorry for being so insensitive. Are you certain that you can continue to attend school for another month? Yes. There's a lot of things that need to get processed. I understand. I'm grateful to you, so I'll do the best I can. Yes, thank you. That means a lot to me. Saying that, 
Kushiro-san left. She only has one month left to spend with everyone at that house. If there's anything I can do, I'll do it. I decided to take action as soon as I could. Hanako, are you there? I instructed you to address me as Alice, didn't I? I have the option to leave, you know. Behind me appeared a tall, blonde beauty dressed in a jet black suit. Alice, Hanako Arisugawa, is my main business intermediary. Put me through to Mr. Gray. I thought you weren't taking any new assignments. Don't be a jerk. I need the money. Proud already? You did, after all, spend all of your money trying to find your missing parents. Now it's purely to help someone. Here, the usual blindfold and earplugs. I don't want anyone to be able to locate our base. You're as cautious as ever. I may be plain, but I actually had a hidden talent. I used to travel to unexplored foreign lands and recover the treasures that lay in those lands for the benefit of a client named Mr. Gray. I was a treasure hunter. That's why I skipped school until last year. I'm glad you're fired up. But aren't you asking for a lot this time? It's a must. If you don't accept my terms, I won't accept your offer. In exchange, I'll go to any dangerous place if you pay me. Fine. I'll do what you want. After all, you are the only one who is capable of doing it. Don't expect a thank you from me. You've thrown me for a loop before. It was supposed to be my own form of charity. It's not my fault that you didn't get your wish. I'll make arrangements for a charter plane. You are free to leave tomorrow. Hari Murakan was at home today either. Maybe hearing about my situation was too heavy for him. Let's go get lunch, Karen! Okay, let's go. This happy school life will also end in month. When I arrived at the labyrinth, I put my life on the line. I had to avoid rolling rock traps and made it through a small room filled with poison gas. Religionists! Get him! I'm not going to die here! I was able to turn the tables on the evil god's cult capital while safeguarding the sacred treasure. This is... the Orb of Truth. If I bring this back, I can save Kushiro-san. I obtained the treasure I was after. Honey Murakun, don't doze off on your first day back in school. Huh? Oh, it's just Kushiro-san. Oh, I'm so exhausted. You seem really energetic today. Oh, yeah, well, actually, turns out my family, we can all live together again. Does that mean the debt has been settled? Yeah, that's right. It turned out the debt was paid off without my father's knowledge. It was as if I'd woken up from a nightmare and everything was back to normal. Well, if it's resolved, there's no need to think about it too much. That's exactly what it was. A nightmare. You should just enjoy school life as usual. Maybe so. I wish you being sleepy was a bad dream too. I thought I rehabilitated you. Well, you'll have to take care of that again, Kushiro-san. I guess I don't have much of a choice. I mean, you're at your house again tomorrow. I'd appreciate it if you did. Hanemukun! Good morning! What the? This early? You arrived before my alarm clock went off. I have to wake you up early to keep you from being late since you're not a morning person. I see, but I'm still sleepy. So give me ten more minutes. No way! You'll just fall asleep again. I'm going to keep an eye on you until it's time to leave. Kushiro-san, were you always this close to me? Do you want to stop by somewhere after school? Okay, sure. Hey, haven't those two been getting along lately? Don't tell me our class president is dating him. We're being talked about. The crepe here is delicious. Would you like a bite? Um, Kushiro-san? Lately, I've been thinking that you're not the same Kushiro-san I used to know. Is that bad? No, not at all. I was just surprised. I've actually been thinking about a lot of things. You were gone for a while, right? Yeah, due to family issues. At least, that's the cover-up. At the time, I was worried that my family would be torn apart. I felt helpless. And the first thing that came to mind was you, Hari Murakan. Me? Yes. I had more thoughts about a boy that I had ever had in my life. That's when I realized I liked you a lot more than I thought I did. So, Honey Murakun, please go out with me. 
You're sure you're okay with me? Yes! There is no one else but you for me. I love you, Harimukun. Even if we were ever to get separated, my feelings would change. That won't ever happen again. I won't let it. I'd be happy if I can be with you forever, too. Uh, then... Yeah. I don't want to go back to a life without you. It's evening already. I'm reluctant to leave. But it's time to prepare dinner for your sisters, right? No. I'd rather spend the whole evening with Harimurakun. I'd love to, too, but... Is it okay? My parents are coming home early today. Besides... Actually, it was my sisters who pushed me. They said, don't come home until you become lovers. If you do, then don't come back until tomorrow. Don't you think that's crazy? Even my parents are joining in on the fun by mocking my sisters. They're a lovely family. I like them. It was all worth it. Then we were college students together and married shortly after I got a job. I couldn't imagine working a day job when I was in high school. But thanks to Karin's rehabilitation, I was able to work as an ordinary salary man. Is that your parents in the picture, Yoshito? Yeah. I believe I mentioned them to you before we married. I was really shocked then. I had no idea they died in a bull accident. I never really accepted that they were gone, but... I found someone I cared about instead, and that helped me come to terms with their death. So, those foreign souvenirs from Yoshito's room... They weren't sent by my father, but rather, my guardian. An uncle who enjoys traveling. That's a lie, isn't it? It's not a lie. Why don't you just fess up? You're the one who paid off all of our debts, right? No way I could. I was still in high school, remember? Yeah, you're right. Even I know it sounds crazy. You know, the first night I spent at your house, I noticed you had scars all over your body. I kept it to myself at the time, but... Yoshito, didn't you have a big adventure in a foreign country without my knowledge? Those souvenirs. You bought them yourself on your travels, didn't you? Something like that could have only happened in a movie. But something miraculous happened to me. An enormous debt was paid off in an instant by an anonymous person. So, who's to say that could have happened? I don't know. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm really glad we didn't get separated. I don't really care about the truth. Hufu, you're right. The most important thing is that we're happy together. So I'll keep things as simple as possible. That'd be great. I'd feel bad if you thought I was a hero when I'm just a regular guy. Yoshito, in my opinion, is a hero who is very dependable in times of trouble. That kind of thing is fine. Come on. Isn't it time for you to reveal what you're hiding from me now? Not hiding anything. I was just about to tell you. Congratulations, dear. Really? Yes! You're gonna become a father, so don't go crying in front of the kids. I'm not crying. I'm just practicing. I bet my real treasures will continue to grow, little by little. I can't find it. Where is it? On the day to school festival, I found a girl desperately looking for something. The girl's name is Shizuru Akamatsu. And she's the school's it girl. She's not only pretty as a flower, but sophisticated and beautiful on the inside. She's the only popular girl who would give me, Tomoya Aizawa, any of her time. Akamatsu-san, is something wrong? Oh, Aizawa-kun! It's just... I think I lost my wallet. What? Oh no! Did you tell the teacher? Not yet. I'm afraid somebody will find it and steal it if the teacher announces it missing. I see, even so. Why are you the only one looking for your wallet? You could have asked your friends for help. I'm sure some of them are trustworthy. I mean, it's the school festival today. It's the biggest event of the year. I don't want them to spend the day looking for my wallet. This girl is way too kind. She lost her wallet. She's in huge trouble. But she's thinking of how her actions could cause trouble for others. It's a shame how good people like her are the ones who usually suffer in life. Hey, let me help you then. Huh? But... But... You must have better things to do. You should be enjoying the school festival. Look, I'm a loner. I don't have any friends to hang out with. I don't think anybody hates the school festival as much as I do. 
And I can't even go home because the teachers will scold me if I do. It's hell for me. It'll be a win-win situation for us if you let me help you find your wallet. Aizawa-kun, thank you. Ha, <laughs> you can thank me once we find your wallet, okay? Let's look around places you've been, for starters. Okay. After that, we spent a while looking for a wallet. Hmm, it's nowhere to be found. It was getting dark, and we still hadn't found any traces of it. I think they're going to shut the school gate soon. The school festival was over long ago. Most of the students had left the school after cleaning up. The only students left were the ones who were taking longer because they had used a lot of big equipment for their booths. Just FYI, we helped clean up the equipment for our class as much as we could. We didn't want to get accused of ditching. I'm sorry. We should get going. But your wallet... We searched for it all day, but still couldn't find it. I'm pretty sure somebody already found it. Maybe the person was kind enough to give it to one of the teachers. I'll go to the teacher's lounge to ask if anybody knows anything. Okay, I'll pay for your train home. Uh, thank you. I left my train pass in my wallet. Uh, stupid me. I'll pay you back tomorrow. Sounds good. We should get going. Okay. I wish my wallet would magically appear in my bags. <gasps> hmm, what is it? Uh, Are you okay? You're sweating like a pig. What's wrong? I... My wallet, I found it. What? You found it? It's... It was in my bag. Oh, I remember now. I put my wallet in my bag when I was getting changed after my turn at the booth. So I wouldn't lose it. It didn't occur to you to check inside your bag? I was freaking out since I thought I dropped it. My bag was the last thing on my mind. Oh. I'm so sorry. I, I, I feel so awful. I wasted so much of your time. You searched for hours with me. I don't know how to make it up to you. I totally ruined your day. Uh. <laughs> uh I saw a coon. Oh, my bad. It's just... I never imagined anything like this would happen in real life. You're goofier than I expected, Akamatsu-san. Uh... Oh, don't cry! I wasn't trying to insult you or anything! I'm glad that we could end this incident with a good laugh. Uh, good laugh? I mean, think about it. You would have gotten in big trouble if you'd lost your wallet. But we found out that it was in your bag the whole time. We should be relieved that things ended this way. I saw Wakun. Don't worry about the time we spent searching. I didn't have anything better to do. I'm relieved that we found your wallet. This is the best way things can end. Let's forget about the whole thing and pretend like it never happened. I'm sure you're disappointed that you didn't get to enjoy the school festival with your friends. It only comes once a year. I feel for you. Uh, why are you so nice to me, Aizawa-kun? Am I being nice? I didn't realize I was. I'm sure anybody in my shoes would be relieved that we found the wallet. Plus, we should help each other out whenever someone needs it. I'm sure others would have helped too. Oh. Hey, why are you guys still here? We're closing the school gates. You should get home. Oh, run away out. Akamatsu-san, let's go home. Uh, okay. We parted ways after leaving the school. We parted ways after leaving the school, and I headed straight home. A few days after the incident... So, what did you want to talk to me about? Akamatsu-san asked to see me on the school rooftop. I'm pretty sure I know what this is about. She wants to thank me for the other day. Uh, uh, Aizawa-kun! Yes? Akamatsu-san suddenly opened her mouth and yelled out my name. I instantly replied. She seems to be nervous about something. I wonder why she is acting that way. I... 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 Like you, Aizawa-kun! Will you... Go out with me? Huh? You like... You wanna, you wanna go out with me? Yes. No, oh, wait a minute. Why would you like somebody like me? I'm not proud to say this, but I'm just a nobody with zero friends. There is nothing about me that would be appealing to a popular girl like you, Akamatsu-san. Uh, that's not true. 
Uh, he's Kun. You are the sweetest guy I know. And you spent the whole day searching for my wallet without complaining. I've been thinking about you since the school festival, and I would love to be your girlfriend. Uh, are you serious? Yes. Man, what do I do? I was flabbergasted. Who would have thought the school it girl would ask a guy like me to be her boyfriend? I must be in some kind of manga storyline. Still... No, sorry. I can't be your boyfriend. No... Why? Did you know that several guys have asked me to be their girlfriend? I mean, they call me the it girl. I'm sure going out with me will only do you good. Well, the thing is, I don't have romantic feelings for you, Akamasu-san. So it doesn't matter how popular you are. It has nothing to do with this. No. To be more specific, I don't want to date her because she's so popular. I'm trying to live a peaceful life here, but going out with Akamasu-san will only cause chaos and trouble for me. I'm terrified to think of what the other guys would do to me when they find out. Anyways, I should get going. Hey, you... Wait, I'm not done talking to you. I can't go out with you no matter what. I'm sorry. I left the school rooftop in a hurry before she could say anything more to me. A few days later. Please, Aizawa. This is the first and last time I'll ask anything from you. I need you to come to the Gulkin. We need one more guy. I usually sit in the corner of the classroom alone, but for some reason, this guy invited me to a Gokan. Apparently, they need another member since one of the original guys couldn't come. I'm pretty sure they picked me because I wouldn't steal any of the girls' attention, since I'm such a boring loser. Uh, are you sure you want me? I might ruin the mood by being there. You just need to sit there nodding and smiling while we all talk. We'll pay you. I'm begging you. Hmm. Meh, he seems to really need my help. Fine, but just this once, okay? Really? I owe you one. Yeah, don't worry about it. I thought I would be doing good by going to this Gokan, but little did I know, I would regret this decision later on. Let me tell you why. Hmm. I found out that Akamatsu-san was at the Gokan as well. Oh, this is awkward. Why is Akamatsu-san sitting across from me? Jeez, why would they plan a Gokan with girls from the same school? Hey, Aizawa, you okay? You're sweating like crazy. Uh, I don't think I'm feeling very well. Is it okay if I go home? Oh, sure. I can't force you to stay when you look that sick. Go home. Do you want me to come with you? No, I'll be fine. I successfully escaped the Gokan and headed home. I felt bad for leaving early, but I couldn't stand to be there. How would I face Akamatsu-san? I'm sure she would enjoy the Gokan more if I was gone. This is the best for both of us. Great. Let's forget about today and move on. So, this is where you live, Aizawa-kun. Your place is really close to school, huh? Uh, uh, Akamatsu-san, why are you here? Well, uh, you looked ill. I followed you because I was worried. You followed me? What about the Gokan? I only agreed to the Gokan because I heard you were going to be there. So that means there's no point in me being there if you're gone, Aizawa-kun. It's better that I left. Now they have the same number of opposite genders. Who the hell told Akamasu-san that I was going to be at the Gokan? I wanted to find out who the culprit was. But I knew it would be impossible. Anyone would tell Akamasu-san anything if she asked him nicely. Thanks for watching out for me. I'm feeling better now. You should head home before it gets late. Yeah, you look a lot better than earlier. Okay then, why don't you invite me in? Why would I do that? I just told you to go home. But I'm so tired. I followed you all the way home. I want to rest my feet for a little bit. My place isn't far from the restaurant we're in. I see. So you're the type of guy who will leave a poor girl outside alone even though she watched over you because she cared for you? Uh. Oh, I understand. Fine then. I guess I'll go back to the Gokan. I'll make sure to let the others know you seemed fine the moment you left the Gokan. Don't want them to worry about you. Uh, please stop. You can come in. I had no choice but to let her in. If I didn't, she would tell the others and I would become famous for being the guy that did the Gokan faking illness. Really? Oh, that's so sweet of you. 
Let's head inside. You can go first. I thought she was caring and modest. Turns out I was wrong. Yakumatsu-san standing in front of me was different from the girl I used to think she was. How can someone change so much in such a short time? Hmm, so this is what your room looks like. It's just an ordinary room. Nothing special about it. This is my first time inside a boy's room. Everything looks so different than mine. <sighs> you know, there is a reason I wanted to come into your room, Aizawa-kun. Uh, what's that? Uh, can I take a look at your bookshelf? Sure, I have no problem with that. <laughs> Thanks, I'm gonna go check it out then. She turned to face a bookshelf and started looking through my books. I was okay with it. I didn't have anything in there that I had to hide from a girl. Aizawa-kun, are you into 2D? Yeah, I like manga and anime. Um, that's not what I meant. I want to know if you like 2D girls. Is that why you have no interest in girls in the real world? That's an extreme theory. I mean, there's no other explanation for you dumping me. I'm glad you're confident in yourself. I spent my whole life getting people to like me. I'm confident for a reason. You have no reason how shocked I was. I, I never expected you to reject me like you did. <laughs> well, I guess you might have a point. I've never liked a girl in the real world. Maybe I'm unconsciously drawn to the 2D world like you just said. I decided to go along with the conversation. I wanted to end it so she would leave as soon as possible. Okay, I see. Akumasu-san left the room after hearing me say that. Maybe she got angry and went home. Or maybe she realized how pathetic I was. But I knew that her leaving was for the best. We'd make an odd couple. I doubt a relationship like that would last long. Two hours after she left my house. I'm back. Akumasu-san came back for some reason. I thought she went home. Why? I didn't say bye to you, right? I went shopping, that's all. What did you go shopping for? Well, that's what I'm going to show you now. Can I borrow an empty room? I need a place to get changed. Change? Wait, what are you doing? Hmm, what do you think I'm doing? Oh, I could stay here and change if you're that curious. Uh, I don't think so. You can use my room to change your clothes. I'll wait downstairs in the living room. I had a pretty good idea of what Akamatsu-san was planning to do. That's why I couldn't look straight at her face. A few minutes later... Aizawa-kun! I'm finished! You can come in! Akamatsu-san finished changing and called me back to the room. I'm just hoping she's not naked when I walk into this room. That would be bad. She's unpredictable right now. What if she really is? Okay, I'm coming in! Do you like it? I saw this outfit on one of the books on your bookshelf. Akumatsu-san was wearing a costume of the character Megumin in a manga called Cheers' Amazing World. Megumin is a young girl character who is carrying a mature for her age. You... you look pretty. Really? I know it! You like girls doing this, don't you? <laughs> I have a great idea for you. I let my guard down when I saw her. She took the chance before I could stop her. So, um... Tomoya-kun. Tomoya-kun? I think I need some love right now. Can you stroke my hair? Uh, Megumin would never say things like that. Huh? She wouldn't? No way. <laughs> it seems like Akamatsu-san had the wrong image of Megumin. I wonder why she thought Megumin would ever say something like that. Tomoya-kun, can I borrow some of your books? Um, go ahead. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Akumasu-san grabbed all the books that Megumin appeared in and rushed out of my room. But, uh, she's still in her cosplay costume. I guess some of the neighbors told my mother that they saw a girl with a cosplay costume on leaving the house. Let's just say my mother was not happy. A few days later... My name is Migomin. I control explosion magic, the best of all the forces. Akumasu returned in front of me as a perfect Megumin. I could tell she studied hard by reading my books. Wow, you look exactly like her. <laughs> I know, right? There is nothing I can't do. Becoming Migumin was easy. Is she Akamatsu-san? Or is she still pretending to be Megumin? Starting this day, Akamatsu-san started to study and pretend to be characters that appeared in all of my favorite books. Eventually, 
Tomo Yakun, I bought the newest volume. Let's read it together. She grew interested in light novels and manga just like me. We spent most of our time reading together like this. It was nice to have a friend to talk to about my interests. I wasn't a loner anymore. And since we had so much time to get to know each other... <laughs> I dreamed of this. Walking to school with you. Naturally, we became drawn to each other. We're now dating. Akumasu-san was pretty and good-natured to start with. There was no way I could resist falling for her after seeing how hard she tried to get me to notice her. I'm bracing myself for the hardships to come. Dating the school's most popular girl isn't an easy thing to do. Still, I'm willing to give our relationship my all. And so, now I think it's my turn to do my best to be a man worthy of her love and affection. So, Kongo-kun, are you finished? We should go out for some drinks tonight. Hanami Hayamori, one of my colleagues, came to ask me at the end of the day. She is known as the prettiest girl of the office. She's also famous for being gentle-hearted. My name is Yuto Kongo, and I'm close to her. Reason unknown. I'm sorry, I need you to be home early today. Really? Uh, you seem busy these days. Yeah, kind of. Hey, I promise I'll make it up to you someday. Gosh, that's what you always say. Did you get a girlfriend or something? <laughs> yeah, I wish. To be honest, I've never had a girlfriend in my whole life. I bet girls like Hayamura-san don't have any trouble getting boyfriends. I'm off then. Bye. Okay, see ya. I left Hayamura-san behind at the office and rushed out to get home. Recently, I've been trying to get home early. Here's why. Yay! Daddy's home. This girl, Kokoro, is always waiting for me at home. She's still four years old, and she's my angel. I need to get home as early as possible to take care of and spend time with her. Yuto, you're home. Haruka, a thanks for taking care of Kokoro every day. Her name is Haruka. She takes care of Kokoro while I'm at work every day. I wouldn't have the time to work if it wasn't for her. No problem. I don't have anything better to do anyways. Before I forget, the bath is ready for you. Go on. Daddy, we haven't eaten dinner yet. Oh, you haven't? Well, let's eat after I take a bath. Okay. Did you know I'm gonna cook with Haruka today? Really? Are you sure? She won't be going anywhere near the knife or the fire. I'll make sure of it. She's going to help me with the plates and simple tasks. Kokoro probably thinks she's gonna cook because she'll be helping around the kitchen. Haruka seems to have it under control. I guess I'll take a bath now. Oh, that felt nice. Daddy! Hmm, what's up? You don't have to work tomorrow, do you? I want to go to the amusement park with you. An amusement park? <laughs> what a great idea! <laughs> Yay! I made a vow to never make Kokoro feel lonely or sad. I plan to keep that vow. Kokoro has already gone through many painful experiences. Amusement park? I, I want to go too. <laughs> Haruka? You never want to leave the house. You're a complete introvert. Hey, are you trying to pick a fight with me? I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I'm curious. Why the sudden change of heart? No reason. It's just... I haven't gone to many places with Kokoro yet. I think it's a nice opportunity for both of us. Okay. Mommy can come too. Thank you. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Yay! It's almost depressing to see Haruka be so gentle with Kokoro since she acts so differently with me. Not that it bothers me. Still, Haruka gets to spend so much time with Kokoro. It should be my turn when I come home from work. I know I'm ranting, but in the end, nothing matters as long as Kokoro is happy. The next day... Daddy, hold me. We finished getting ready to leave the house, and Kokoro asked me to hold her. She's still four. She loves to be cuddled by us. Kokoro, don't you want mommy to hold you too? Hey, don't butt in, Haruka! Kokoro asked me to hold her, not you! I'm scared you'll drop her, Yuto. It's too risky. I'll just hold her to be sure. You're just saying that because you want to hold her. Daddy gets to hold me today. What? <laughs> too bad for you, Haruka. <sighs> 
don't get so cocky, Yuto. She's only asking you to hold her because you guys don't get to spend much time together. Oh, don't get all bitter. Haruka seemed extremely upset about not getting picked. I come home early every day to be with Kokoro. So it's not like we don't spend time together. I won't settle for number two. Not when it comes to Kokoro. Hey, I get what you mean, but still. <laughs> Kokoro seemed uninterested in the whole conversation. She's the apple of my eye. I understood how Haruka found. I want to be Kokoro's number one as well. Come on, let's get going. Yay, amusement park. Here we go! Yuto, it's my turn next. Hey, it's up to Kokoro, right? And so the three of us headed out together to enjoy a fun day at the amusement park. It's been so long since we last hung out like this, Konami. I know, things have been a bit hectic since I started working. So, how's everything going with your crush boy? Huh? What are you talking about? Don't blame Dom, Kongo-kun, was it? You're always talking about him whenever we hang out, <laughs> like non-stop. I think somebody has a crush. It's... it's not like that, okay? He's just a good friend. Or... Uh, more like a good colleague. Honey, you know that I can read right through you, right? Stop! You're messing with me! Daddy, where is the amusement park? Almost there. We need to get to the train first. Wait, I know this voice. Hmm, what is it? I want to play at the amusement park. Now! Don't worry, we'll be there in no time. It's Congo Gun, but wh why? Why? Yeah, that's what I want to ask you. Why are we hiding? Uh, I can't believe he has a child. So that means the woman walking besides them is his wife. Hello, Earth Konami. Wait. When did he get married? Nobody told me he was going to get married to anybody. Plus, uh, that girl, she looks three or four. So, uh, they've been married for at least four or five years? Oh my gosh, she's not listening to me at all. Uh, hey, what are you doing? Shh. Don't be so loud. They might notice us watching them. Uh, are we stalkers? Why are we following them? I need to find out the truth behind all of this. Uh, what is there to find out about? Wait, is that guy over there Kongo-kun? Um, yes, he is Kongo-kun. Oh, you shouldn't be following him then. I get it, you're shocked that he is married, but they are obviously on their way to go out for some family time. You'll only ruin their day if they find out you are following them. Why would you want to cause trauma? But, but you should pull back if you really care about that guy. You'll never get your happy ending by ruining a family. You'll be miserable. I know, I, I know that. But just because he's with them, it doesn't mean he's married to them. Open your eyes, honey. They're a family. Y you know that girl could be a woman's daughter. Oh, uh, what? I mean, I would know if he's married or not. Uh, we work together. Or maybe he wanted to keep his private life private. I he would have to write it on the documents we hand to our boss. He can't possibly hide it completely. But nobody has been talking about anything like that. And I would know since we've been working together since we joined the company. Plus, he's the kind of guy that would talk about that stuff if it happened. So, you think the girl is the woman's daughter? I I yes. The thing is, I think the girl looks more like Kongo-kun than the woman walking with them. 
Maybe she's his little sister, and the woman next to them is his older or uh, younger sister. Or they could be cousins, right? Uh, you're clutching onto ridiculous theories, Konami. None of them sound realistic, okay? The only plausible explanation is that Kongo-kun is married, and that he has a wife and a young child. Her... Uh, are you sure? But it's not like you heard it from his mouth. That's why I suggest you ask him when you see him at work. But for now, we should leave them be. Let's do what's best for everybody. Monday. Good morning. Morning, Hayamori-san! Did something happen? I asked Hayamori-san a question because she didn't seem like herself. She's always cheerful and bubbly. I was worried since this was the first time seeing her so down. Something... Uh, well, I guess so. Are you okay? And you need to vent? Your kindness only brings me sorrow. Huh? She could be in serious trouble. Do you want to go out tonight? We can talk if you want. Uh, are you sure you're allowed to? Who would I get in trouble with? The people waiting for you at home. They'll be worried for you. Oh, them. Well, I'm sure they'll miss me. But it's okay. I knew Kokuro would definitely whine about it. But I couldn't leave Hayamori-san in the state she was in. Uh, are you sure you're okay? Does your chest hurt? Uh, my head hurts, in a way. What does that mean? Don't worry about me, I'll be fine. Let's go for some drinks. Okay, thank you. I should text her, I could tell her I'll be late. I sat down at my desk and started on my workload for the day. After both of us finished working... Come on, let's go! Uh, are you sure? You won't get in trouble later? Don't worry, I'll be fine. I already texted that I will be coming home late. Boy, come to think of it, I don't think I ever told Hayamori-san that I have people waiting for me at home. Or maybe I did. How else would she know about my situation? Uh, uh, home late? I'm not expecting us to stay out late at all. Huh? I said I wanted to talk to you, but that doesn't mean we'll do anything that causes you to stay out too long. That would be like betraying your family. I could never do that. Um, what I wanted to say is that we'll be drinking alcohol and the talk might end up taking a while. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I must have misunderstood. Uh, I'm curious to know what she imagined we would do. Did she think that? Uh, anyways, let's go. Hayamori-san suddenly grabbed my hand and pulled me forward. It was as if she was trying to dodge the subject. So, uh, what did you want to talk about? I got right to the point as soon as we sat down in the izakaya. Well, this might sound a little weird, but... Kongo-kun, are you married? Huh? Uh... Say what? No, no, I'm, I'm not. Why? Because I saw you walking with your wife and daughter during the weekend. If you're not married, who are those people? Oh, I see. Now I get it. The woman is my cousin, and the little girl is my little sister. Huh? Your cousin and your little sister? Yeah, my parents. They passed away because of a car accident last year. My little sister Kokoro is still four, but I knew I couldn't take care of her by myself. That's why I asked my cousin to watch her while I work. She makes money on stocks using her savings from when she used to work. She lives with us now. I guess it's more like she insisted she moved in so she could take care of Kokoro. Not that I'm complaining, she's been a huge help. So, uh, that means I was wrong about everything. I mean, uh, I predicted it, but I don't think I actually believed it. Yeah, but I can see how things look from the outside. Wait, Hayamori-san, is that what was causing you to feel so blue? If it was, I wanted to ask her why it would affect her that way. As it turned out... Uh... Judging by her reaction, I was right. Now I'm curious. No way. Yeah... But wait, why? Why would my family situation cause you to worry? Well, um, the reason for that is deeper than the ocean. That's insanely deep. What is it? She was trying to avoid answering. 
So I decided to give her time to prepare herself. Eventually. You. Huh? I'm sorry I couldn't hear you. It's because I like you. I am so into you, Kongo-kun. I didn't want you to be married. <laughs> Why? You've never given me any signs. Yes, I did. I made sure I did. I wouldn't have asked you to go out for drinks with me that many times if I didn't like you. That's why I declined all the other guys who asked me to hang out after work. I knew she was telling the truth. She was famous for never going out for drinks. I was the only one she ever invited out, and I would always feel targeted by the other guys for that. But I never realized there was a reason for her actions. The thing is, there is nothing about me that a girl like you could find attractive. You are kind, and you do your job well. You're the first one to help me whenever I need it. How could a girl not fall for that? She barked back at me, which left me open mouth. I've had a crush on you for the past three years. That's how long I've had feelings for you. Oh, I didn't know. Thank you. I've never seen her push for something like this. She's like a completely different person than the Hayamori-san I thought I knew. Now that I've told you my feelings, I'd like to know what you think of me, Kongo-kun. My feelings? Honestly, she's had a place in my heart since we both started working at our current company. She's pretty, kind, and pushes all the right buttons. Plus, she always had time to hang out with me. Anybody in my shoes would feel attracted to her. Well, I think we should go out. Really? Are you sure? I've always been fond of you. You're attractive in and out. But I never acted on it because I didn't think I was good enough for you. You are more than good enough for me. I don't care what anybody else thinks. My opinion should be prioritized right now. Yeah, I know, and I appreciate it. Well then, so <laughs> I guess we're going out now? Yeah, I think so. I promise to be good to you, Hayamura-san. Or Konami-san. Okay, me too, Yuto-kun. And so, Konami-san and I started dating. Here's what happened afterward. You should do what you want. I told Haruka what happened with Konami-san, and she permitted us to live together if that's what we wanted. She also said she had no intention of judging what I do with my life. However... You're free to do whatever, but I'm still Kokoro's mother. She was set on keeping her position as Kokoro's mother figure. I think that's for the best since Kokoro already considers Harukura a mother. Kokoro already knows that Harukura and I are not her real parents. She didn't seem affected when I told her I started dating Konami-san. My wish is for Kokoro and Konami-san to get along. I plan to do everything I can for the four of us to live happily ever after. Yata! One day, the CEO of a client company said there was something she wanted to talk to me about and I headed towards her office. Miss Shiho Hasakura, who was the CEO of this company, came jumping towards me, uh, my name's Yota Amane, by the way, out of nowhere. Whoa, you scared me there. Ow! Uh, jeez, that was quite the sound. Ow, ow, oh, oh, why'd you do that, Yota? I'm sorry, I just reacted and... Well, I guess you're just gonna have to take responsibility for this. You'll have to join our company. I believe that was your own doing, so I will politely decline. Excuse me? That was a very serious tone, wasn't it? I don't know why, but for some reason, Miss Hasakura, the CEO, seemed to really like me. Of course, it's not like we were former classmates in high school or anything like that. I'm sure I would have never forgotten someone this beautiful if I went to high school with her. But even so, we're both 27 years old. And this is a little bit too childish. Well then, what did you want to talk to me about? <sighs> you are always so quick to change the conversation. I didn't think there was much beyond that. Anyway, what's the matter? Wait here one second. Um, ah, here it is. Here, this. Without much explanation, she handed me something. What? A photo? Yeah, yeah, isn't she super cute? Um, isn't this person you? No, it's not. No, the hairstyle and hair color are different, but
but it's definitely you, Miss Hasakura. Well, I guess there's no denying that we look alike. Because this is my younger sister. Sister? Is that why she looks so familiar? Yeah! Hey, so would you be interested in a marriage interview with this girl? What? But why? You see, unlike me, this girl is a lot more quiet and shy, and she doesn't have a single male friend. And that makes me worried about her. So, I was thinking that you could be her husband. What are you plotting? Hey, now, wait a minute. Why are you doubting me? How awful of you. I've known you for almost five years now. You're not the type to do something like this. What? What? What are you talking about? You yourself. Before you even talk about a marriage partner, you don't even have a boyfriend, do you? So why are you worried about your younger sister first? Oh, you know, I'm pretty outgoing and social, so I'm pretty popular, you know? If I wanted to make a boyfriend, I could at any time. So that's why I wanted to take care of my sister, who doesn't seem like she has a chance, you know? Hmm, well, to be fair, she was known as the unparalleled beauty within our company. A anyway, more importantly, what do you say? Are you gonna meet her or not? Hmm, let's see. I am 80 to 90% sure she has ulterior motives. Well then, I would be happy to meet your younger sister. What? Are you sure? Why are you so shocked? Because it's you, Yota. So I was sure that you would come up with some kind of smart excuse and say no. Well then, should I say no as you expected? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. I don't think it's very manly of you to take back your words. Wasn't it you that just tried to make me do that? Uh, anyway, if you accept it at once, then now you have to at least meet her. Yes, I know. I was only kidding. Ugh, teasing me like that. You're so mean, Yota. Oh, come on. Please don't pout like that. If that's it, I'll be getting back to my office then. I'm a system engineer, and I've been temporarily dispatched to Miss Asakura's company. This and that, it's been almost five years now. The CEO is a childish person, like her. But within system engineering companies, this one was actually pretty big and well-known. That's why I've been at this company for so long. I continued working as usual, until the day of the marriage interview arrived. It was set up to be just the two of us without our parents, so I was waiting alone inside of a high-end restaurant. Normally it would be the standard manner to wear a suit to something like this, but I was told to come in my casual clothes, so that it felt more like a date. So I was currently in my everyday clothing. Well, I wonder how this is going to go. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. My name is Shikusa Hasakara. Nice to meet you. I'm Yota Amane. Miss Shikusa, is that right? Yes, it's a pleasure to meet you. I see. Her name is similar to her sister's. It's a pretty rare name, isn't it? I think it's very beautiful. We sat down and lightly began introducing ourselves. It turns out that she was still in her fourth year of college. Once she graduates, her plan was to work under her sister, so that she could learn the business. I see. What happened to the common shy part? My impression of Miss Shikusa was that she was a pretty talkative young woman. She didn't seem calm or shy in any way. More than anything, I heard that she didn't have a single male friend, but she seemed extremely comfortable around me, as though she was very used to talking to guys. Well then, where would you like to go? After having been treated to one of the most amazing meals I've ever had in, probably better than anything I'll ever have again in my life, we walked out of the restaurant, and I asked her what the plan was. Because I knew nothing about Miss Shikusa or what she might like, I hadn't prepared any sort of plan for the date. I figured it would be best to decide together, since neither of us knew each other that well yet. Mr. Yota, what do you normally like to do? Um, I'm sorry, this is actually my first date, so... <laughs> no, no, I meant on your days off. On my days off? Well, I guess I study programming when I have the time. Oh, jeez. No, no, that was just a joke. 
right, of course it was. I knew that. She definitely just looked at me like I was serious. I do actually study, but I definitely don't spend the entire day doing that. Studying even after you already have a job? Don't you find that tedious? Well, believe it or not, I actually enjoy programming, so I don't dislike it at all. That being said, it's an ever-evolving world, and the progress is steady. So if you don't keep studying, it's easy to get left behind. As long as this is my job, that is something that I expected and need to keep up with. I see. I didn't know that. That's really cool of you. Um, thanks. But that was a very sudden change of mood. <laughs> I was just thinking that it's really cool how serious you are about your job. This is normal, you know. It's the bare minimum that everyone does. Did it make you blush? I'm not blushing. Are you sure? Miss Shikusa, I meant to say this earlier, but you do look a lot like your older sister, don't you? Uh, that's not true at all. <laughs> Are you trying to whistle? I don't think it's working. Give me a break, I'm not very good at it. Then why are you doing it? More importantly, the beach. Let's go to the beach. Wait, we're going to go swimming now? It's still the spring. It's not summer yet. That's not what I'm saying. Do you think I'm that clueless? That's not what we're going to do. We're just going to go look at the beach. Oh, I see. That scared me. I wouldn't put it past her to say something like that seriously. So I honestly thought she wanted to jump in. Sheesh. You're a lot more oblivious than I thought. Miss Shikusa, you were dropped off here, right? Yes, my butler drove me here. They really are a crazy rich family. I have my car in the parking lot right now, so we can go in my car if you'd like. Ah, sure. You know, this is my first time riding in your car. Well, of course, because we just met for the first time today. Ah, yes, that's right. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I got a little too excited. It's okay. Well, shall we then? I started the car, and we got going. When it comes to the beach, it wasn't that close to the town that we were living in. Using the highways, we drove for about two hours. Wow, what an amazing breeze. We were nearing the end of spring, and summer was just around the corner so the air was getting warmer and the sea breeze felt really nice. I hadn't been to the beach in years, so I thought it was a great idea to come here. It really is. It feels great. Mr. Yota, let's go closer to the water. Uh, your hand? Oh, come on. This is nothing. It's okay, isn't it? If we get married, we're going to hold hands a lot anyway. I guess in her mind, it was already decided that we were going to get married. Uh, it's cold! Well, yeah. It might be getting warmer, but it's still the spring. I'm sure the water temperature is still quite low. But it still feels great! Why don't you take your shoes off and come in too? No thank you. We didn't bring any towels, so I don't want to get wet. Uh, I... I also didn't bring any... Oh! This person... She really is quite airheaded. Well then, I'm going to go buy some towels nearby. Take that! What? I felt a splash of water towards me and I dodged it. Ugh, why are you dodging it? If I don't dodge it, then I'll get wet. I'm doing it so that you get wet. Why are you getting mad at me? Because what if someone tries to hit on me while you're gone? The beach season hasn't started yet. So I don't think that there's anyone near the beach trying to pick up girls yet. You never know that, because I'm super cute, you know? Even if they just happen to walk by, they might try to come talk to me. How confident are you? Yeah, well, people do call her the unparalleled beauty, and there's no denying that she actually is really pretty, but still. So then, what are you suggesting I should do? We're already here, so why don't you jump into the water with me? And if I say no? There's an even larger amount of water might be aimed towards you. 
She's too insistent. I guess I have no choice. If she splashed a large amount of water and soaked me, I wouldn't be able to get into the car, so I gave in. Just like a lovey-dovey couple scene in a manga, should we splash water onto each other? Please, definitely do not do that! There would be no point in me getting in the water then! Boo! Mr. Shota, you're a meanie! I don't care if that makes me a meanie, I'd rather that than get wet. Whatever. Anyway, when are you going to stop playing this game and tell me the truth, Miss Shiho Hasakura? Gah? What are you saying? I'm Shikusa. I mean, were you really even trying to hide it? You were fully showing yourself from time to time, and even just now, that was fully something Miss Hasakura, the CEO, would do. Uh, um, what are you talking about? We're sisters. Of course we're going to be similar in some ways. Even the name, Shikusa, it's almost identical to your name, Shiho. It's just a play on words and the meaning of your name. It's just a code, isn't it? <sighs> How did you know? A normal person never would have figured that out. When I first met you, you explained your name in depth to me. That Shiho is the name of a plant, but at the same time, it's also known as the plant of thoughtfulness and kindness. And Shikusa is the flower that comes from that plant, which is given to people when they want to say, I'll never forget you. I'm always thinking of you from afar, or reminiscence, right? Wow, of course you remember all of that. I think my memory is pretty good, slightly better than average. Well, then, is there anything else you remember? Is that all you remember? What? Miss Hasakura, I mean, when I saw the photo of Shikusa, it did look very familiar. At first, I thought it was because she looked identical to you, but that wasn't why. When I saw you in person, and the more we started to talk, I remembered Miss Hasakura. When we were in high school, we've met before, haven't we? When I was in high school, I was working part-time at a cafe, and there was a high school girl who would often come. She would always order a black tea and a cake, and would be reading a novel by herself. She was a quiet and calm girl but she was always very polite and seemed really kind. She came often, so whenever the cafe was quiet, we would occasionally make small talk. You remembered. I'm sorry it took me so long to realize, but Miss Hasakura, you seem like a completely different person from that girl back then. In high school, a shy and nerdy bookworm who was always keeping to herself, now she's the CEO of a company. Extremely outgoing, energetic, and fashionable. It was such a 180 degree difference that I couldn't notice it was the same person. You see, I... I always like you, Yota. I started going to that cafe because I really liked the flavor of the black tea and cakes there. But the more I started to talk to you, I realized that I had fallen for you. To be honest, I wanted to tell you how I felt back then, but I couldn't muster up the courage. And by the time I felt ready, you had already quit your job there. In order to study for college exams, I had quit my part-time job in my last year of high school. From there, I had spent all of my time studying, so I never went back to the cafe. But because of that, I never saw her again. I never could have imagined that this was the CEO's intention. I... I regretted it ever since. I thought I should have told you how I felt earlier. But at the time, I realized I was plain and bad at communication, so you probably would have rejected me even if I told you how I felt. That's why I studied really hard to understand what it meant to be fashionable and likable, so that the next time I saw you, you would like me too. I was sure that I could find you anyway, if I hired a detective or something. Wait a second. You just said something crazy at the end there like it was nothing! But then, when I heard that one of our projects was about to go up in flames, I went to go see the situation, and you were there! I thought that was fate! Ah, I see. So that's how I ended up staying at that company. At that time, 
I was dispatched to this company to figure out a solution for this project that was burning and became a temporary employee. That's why, once that project was completed, I should have been transferred to another company to start working on a new project. However, my manager at the time told me, the CEO of this company wants you to stay, so you'll be here for a while, and left me designated to this company. The people I was working with seemed happy about the decision, so I didn't think too deeply about it. But I had no idea that that was the reason why. But then, why didn't you tell me when we were reunited about our high school days? Because you didn't seem to notice me at all. When I thought about how insignificant I was to you, it made me mad. She's so stubborn. I said it earlier too, but you changed so much that I don't think anyone could have realized. Plus, nearly five years had passed since we had last seen each other. But wait, you didn't even try to come find me, did you? Even if she had studied how to be more fashionable and asked a detective to investigate, surely she could have found me within those five years. Because even if I did try to meet you again, I didn't know what I would say to you or how to start a conversation with you. She's so complicated. But I already decided that I'm going to give it my all. I put on the long straight black hair in hopes that you might remember me that way but I was going to tell you how I felt as soon as you remembered who I was. So, will you please go out with me, with the intention of getting married in the future? But then, when I asked her about it, why did she try to hide it from me and do all of this? But I left that aside, because back then, I also really liked that girl. Maybe the reason why I accepted going on this strange date without thinking too deeply about it was because I was subconsciously remembering that girl from the photograph. That's why. Well then, I look forward to being your boyfriend, Shiho. I decided to accept her proposal. Uh, are you sure? Yes. I also like you, Shiho. I always have. Uh, well, I look forward to being your girlfriend too, Yota. And so, the two of us became a couple. If you're wondering what happened from there, Shiho moved things along very quickly and pushed for us to get married. We were both 27 years old, so she said she wanted to get married as soon as possible. Perhaps the reason why she moved so quickly this time, despite being so late to confess her feelings to me, was because she realized that she was nearing the age to get married. To be honest, I was a little bit flustered by how quickly things moved, but in any case, she was the person that I loved, and I decided to put our short relationship aside since we had known each other for years. Now, I'm going to focus on making her my happy wife. There is a view that I will probably remember until the day I die. The afterglow of sunset surrounded her. She just stood there with her back to me. She was alone. There was not a single person out there with her. The pain growing inside my chest was from the frustration. It wasn't about the fact that I lost. I felt so incompetent for disappointing her. I should have done better. She had given her all to cheer me on, and I couldn't give anything back to her. I could feel the wound on my knee throbbing, burning. <sighs> it was taking everything I had to stop myself from crying. I didn't, though. I didn't cry. I had no time to waste for tears. There was something important I had to do. I rubbed my eyes dry and promised myself something. If I was to ever get another chance, I would. I opened my eyes. The scene from six years ago was gone. The girl in my vision had beautifully matured. She was now running around the school field. The interclass relay race was the last event of today's school sports day. <sighs> will I succeed this time? Can I do it? <laughs> oh no! Kokona, my childhood friend, floated up in the air. It happened in a matter of seconds. I closed my eyes for a moment. When I opened them, she was lying on the ground. The other relay members passed her as she stayed on the ground. Our class was not in the lead anymore. She was getting left behind and I prepared myself for defeat. I'm not giving up. You got this, Kokona. We believe in you. Go, Matsuda! <laughs> My childhood friend, Kokona Matsuda, never gives up. She doesn't know how to give up on anything. 
She's always been like that, and she still is. Even after we grew apart. Here. Got it! You gotta win. Yeah, I promise I'll win this time! The baton pass was perfect. I held on to the baton with my life as I moved my legs into motion. Go! Masato! I set my eyes on my targets. The relay members who ran past Kokona when she fell to the ground. One. Two. Only one more member of the pass to win the race. I was the first one to reach the finish line. I doubt I've ever worked my body so much. I think that's why my concentration shut off the moment I stepped through the finish line. Huh? Masato, watch out! My feet won't move. Gosh, I'm so tired. That's what I was thinking right before blacking out. My body hit the ground and it was painful. But none of that mattered as I was sucked into darkness. Before we go on, let me introduce a little about ourselves. My name is Masato Kawaguchi, and the girl standing next to me is Kokona Matsuda. We are childhood friends. We grew up together. Because of an incident during our elementary school sports day, we grew apart and stopped talking. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of how we repaired our broken relationship. It's not much, but I hope you enjoy it. Oh yeah, it's broken. Broken? What is? Your foot. You'll need crutches for the next few weeks. You're lying! I would never lie to you. Just a reminder, I blacked out after the relay race. I was lying on a bed inside the nurse's office when I woke up. I immediately knew something was wrong. Ow, what is wrong with my foot? The adults took me to the hospital. The results, well, you heard what the doctor said to me. Monday after the weekend. Masato, hey. Kokona? Wait, what? I heard from your mom that you broke your foot. Oh, yeah. Let me take your bag. Why? Your foot. It's all my fault. That's not true. I did this to myself. No, it's my fault. You wouldn't have to run so hard if it wasn't for my stupid mistake. So, did I redeem myself? Huh? What? Uh, nothing. Come on, let's go. It'll take you longer to get to school since you have to use your crutches. Are you gonna come with me? I told you, this is my responsibility. I'm staying by your side until you recover, fully. Hey, wait, slow down, will ya? Wow, feels so weird going to school with you. Yeah, it's been 1,738 days since we last went together. Whoa, I didn't know that you kept count. Oh, oh, whatever. Anyways, Masato, I didn't realize how tall you've become. You're huge. Well, the last time we came this close was about six years ago. How tall are you now? Uh, 178 centimeters, I think. You're just Masato. Don't get cocky. I'm not cocky at all. Yes, you are cocky. <laughs> now you're being mean. You're so cocky because you've gotten so handsome. Wait, are you trying to insult me? Yes, I am. I'm insulting you. So, anyways... I don't want to hear any more insults. I'm not. I'm done with that. Okay. What I meant to say is that, you know, at the school sports day, you were really, you know, really c cool. Gosh, I can't do it. You're being weird. Morning! Yo, the sports day hero is finally here! Kawaguchi-kun, you were awesome out there! You were like a main character in a manga <laughs> with your wound of honor? What the hell is this? Well, dude, the way you overtook all the other relay members during the race, that was sick! Everybody thinks so! You're all delusional. I'm the pathetic guy who blacked out and ended up with a broken foot. I have nothing to be proud of. That's all a part of your heroic tale! Just FYI, the girls have been blabbering on. They're crazy about you? Really? Masato? What are you guys talking about? Uh, nothing, ma'am. I know you guys are all excited he's here, but he's injured. Let's make sure we all take good care of him. Um, anyways, everybody back to their seats. Come on, shoot. Masato needs to sit down. Hey, Masato! Why is Kawaguchi taking care of you? I didn't know you guys were that close. Uh, I have no idea. 
Oh, I get it. You want her, don't you? <laughs> I guess things turned out well for you, huh? Aren't you glad you broke a bone? It's not like that. Uh, or maybe. Masato, why don't you sit down? I'm sure you're tired. Okay, thanks. I should be the one thanking you. Kokona? I didn't sing anything. You're welcome. Masato, you can't go to the kiosk with that foot. Uh, it won't be a problem. Yes, it will. That's why I brought you an obekto today. Wow, wait, did you make this? So what if I did? Do you not eat homemade lunches or something? No, that's not what I meant. What is it, then? I was just gonna say, it looks great. Hmm, I know, right? When did you learn how to cook like this? I'm in high school. I am old enough to cook meals. Are you sure I can eat this? Of course you can. I didn't make it for you just to stare at it. I made sour plum, salmon, and tuna mayo rice balls. I remember you like tuna mayo. That's sweet of you to remember. Only because you made such a huge deal about your tuna mayo rice balls when we were on a field trip in elementary school. Mm. Mm, yes, this is by far the best rice ball I've ever had. Really? Why would I lie about this? I'm glad. Hey, you should try this rolled omelette. And the Japanese fried chicken, too. I can't stuff everything in my mouth at once. Uh, you're right. My bad. I'm going to enjoy the obento slowly. Everything looks delicious. Whatever you say, it's fine. Take your time with it. Hey, aren't you going to eat anything? No, I eat too much breakfast. I'm not hungry. You nibbled while you were making it, huh? No, I would never do that. Don't worry about me. Just worry about finishing the obento. I feel bad for making you walk me home. I'm fine. I told you. I'm going to stay by your side until you're fully recovered. I'm here for you. It'll be such a hassle for you. Stop worrying about me. I'm not doing much. Or do you not want me to? I would never think that. I'm glad I have you, Kokona. That's right. You should be glad that I'm sticking around. I am, thank you. You don't have to thank me. I'm the one who's been thankful for you, Masato. So, um, well, th thank. Hey, Kokonya! Yuina? Uh, are you on your way home? Yep. Hi, Masato. Just then, Kokona's little sister, Yuina, appeared in front of us. Hi, Yuina chan, how are you? So, so? Huh? Gosh, you guys are really silly. You wait to open till Kokona made for you, right? Yeah, it was really good. Ah, I'm so happy for you, Kokona. Yuina, what are you trying to. Jeez, do you know how much Kokona put the whole family through this morning? What do you mean? Kokona made us taste every dish she made. She wanted to make sure everything was perfect for your bento. No, I didn't. I did not do that. You should never lie. How many rice balls do you think I stuffed in my mouth? Daddy started bawling his eyes out. She sobbed about how grown up Kokona is making an obento for her love. I bet his tears made his rice balls salty. <laughs> uh, no. Let me explain, Masato. Um... And she made me go to the supermarket several times just to buy eggs for the rolled omelette. Uh, Yuina, please. Can you stop talking now? But I mean, it was all worth it since you enjoyed the albento, Masato-kun. I'll let you go as long as you take responsibility and make Kokona your wife. Yuina, that's enough out of you. Uh, bye, guys! Uh, anyways, Kokona-san. Yes? I want to ask you if what Yuina-chan was saying is true. You said you were in high school and that making meals was a piece of cake. I have the right to remain silent. So when you said you ate too much for breakfast, you meant... I have the right to remain... Your face is bright red, you know. <sighs> Silence! Ow, that hurts! Cut it out! I will when you shut up. You're being silly. Are you trying to shut me up with your fists? You're so aggressive. Fine, I'll stop now. I didn't hear anything. Your bento was easy to make and you didn't taste your food so much that you overate. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. You sound so arrogant. 
That's what you get for being so nosy. Still, I was a bit surprised. About what? Well, that you cared enough about me to go through all that trouble to make a homemade obento. Sato-kun, didn't I just tell you to stop thinking about my obento making? All jokes aside, I thought that you didn't like me, Kokona. What? Uh, I'm serious. Why would I hate you, actually? I know. I realized you didn't hate me while spending the whole day with you. And it made me so happy. It's just, I felt that way because we weren't close anymore. I know why we grew apart. It was because of the inner class relay race during the elementary school sports day. The day I tripped. I still remember gazing at your back, seeing how upset you were about losing the race. Masato. I know. I should have apologized to you about it sooner. But I couldn't do it. I guess I was scared. And then time kept passing, and I couldn't find the right time to talk to you. But I want to say it now. I'm sorry for what happened that day. We practiced so hard for that race, and I ruined it all. Some of you might think that I'm overreacting, and it's not a big deal. But for me, this was an issue that had been nagging in my heart for a long time. I think it's because I always had feelings for Kagona. I was disappointed in myself for betraying the girl I liked. But I was still young. I wasn't mature enough to accept that it was okay to feel like that. I was just an elementary school kid. Um, uh, Masato, you've got it all wrong. Huh? Let me ask you, at the last race when I tripped, would you have blamed me if you hadn't finished in first place at the end? I wouldn't have. Are you sure? Of course I am. Well, it's the same for me. It wasn't your fault that we lost. I don't blame you. I was obviously disappointed with the results, but I never blamed you for anything at all. But then, why did you start avoiding me after that? I didn't know how to comfort you. You were blaming yourself, and I had no idea how to talk to you about it. I spent days thinking about it, and then I forgot how natural it was for us, and I started getting nervous. That's why. Huh? That's the only reason? It may not sound like a proper reason, but I was really stuck and confused, okay? The timing was horrible, too. What do you mean, the timing? It was around the time I first acknowledged my first love. Wait, does that- I have the right to remain silent. Ugh, not again. This conversation is over. We should end it. No! <sighs> Masato. You can't cry your way out of this. I have something important to ask you. Look at me, please. This might make me sound a bit conceited, but if I'm right, my first love wasn't one-sided. Was it mutual, Kokona? Yes, it was mutual. I see. Yep. I'm not conceited. Yeah, you were right. You can be conceited about us. Or, I mean, I want you to be. Ugh, you can't say that, Kokona. That's not okay. Why? I want to hold you now, but I can't because of my foot. Well, we'll have to wait until your foot's healed then, won't we? We got this. We waited for six long years. We can wait a few weeks. I don't think I can. Hmm, well then. Here, let me... Huh? I'll hold you just for today. Gosh, you've grown so big. Kakona. You're like a full adult now. How cocky. Stop, Kakona. That's not fair. <laughs> I guess I win. At that moment, I remembered something. Whenever Kakona smiled like that, I could never win. She had my heart. Hey, I'm here to pick you up. Jeez, you know you don't have to come anymore. My foot is better now, all healed. My gosh, did you really think I came to pick you up every morning just because I was worried about your foot? I can't believe you would think that. You're a dummy. No, I know why you came to see me. But Kakona, you've become so open about your feelings. You already know how I feel about you, Masato. And I know you feel the same way. There's no need to hide it anymore. Come on, we should get going to school. Yeah, yeah. Can't you try to act happier? You're going to school with your very pretty girlfriend. Gosh, Kakona, I can never win against you, can I? <laughs> Oh yeah, there's someone I wanted to ask you. 
Yeah? First, want to make something clear. You have no right to remain silent. That depends on what you ask. So what is it? Ask me. You know how you said you didn't blame me when we lost a relay race in elementary school? Yes, I did. Then why were you blaming yourself for losing the relay race during the sports day this year? So clueless. How could you not know that that was just an excuse to talk to you? I searched for a reason to talk to you for the past six years, and I finally found it. I didn't want to miss my chance, so I grabbed onto it. Seriously? Yep, and I'm so glad I did. If I didn't take that chance, I wouldn't be standing next to you holding your hand right now. Kakona-san, that's not fair. Huh, you keep saying that. Yes, I do, and you seem satisfied with it. I am. Okay, come on. That kind of ruins the mood. I'm doing it if you aren't going to. You're feeling embarrassed, aren't you, Miss Kakona? <laughs> you got me. Kakona's face was bright red. She was adorable. I could never wrap my arms around to hold her. Masato, you mean so much to me. How do you feel? I have the right to remain silent. Hey, th that's my line. And I know how you feel because you're holding me so tightly. Yeah, you're right. You mean the world to me, Kakona. This is the end of our little story. I'm looking forward to spending the next chapter of my life with Kakona by my side.